Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to welcome you to another episode and another interview episode. So as I mentioned on Thursday, we have another returning author visiting today on the podcast, and that author is Claire Marty. She was here for the first time back in, I believe, April to talk about the second of her Finding Forever in Laguna series, which is a trilogy, and that one is called At Last in Laguna. The first one is called Second Chance in Laguna. So, you know, there's definitely a theme a second Chance in Laguna, At Last in Laguna, and Sunset in Laguna, and it's the Finding Forever in Laguna series, so you definitely should be able to remember what this series is called. Just remember Laguna, Claire Marty. So, as I said, she was here in April to talk about the second, and now she's back to talk about the third in this trilogy, the the uh, the final book in the trilogy, Sunset in Laguna. So let me go ahead and give you the description of this book. Returning to Laguna Beach after four tours in the Middle East, Christian Wolf leaves the military behind and buys a wine bar, vowing to keep his life simple. He fights to keep his devastating PTSD a secret and refuses to burden anyone else with his baggage. When stunning Kelly Prescott and her red stilettos saunter into town, she drives him past the bonds of his self-control. Successful in her father's stuffy law firm, Kelly's too compassionate to survive in the cutthroat world of corporate litigation. Leaving behind both family and courtroom drama, she moves to Laguna to become general counsel for a non-profit veterans organization. She didn't bargain on a gorgeous modern-day Heathcliff, and in Christian, she sees another kind of challenge, one she can't resist. So this is Christian and Kelly's story. We have been introduced to these characters in the first two books of the trilogy, but now they get their own story and we get to find out more about their backstories and then how they are moving forward. I have a confession to make. Um, I really didn't like Wuthering Heights. Oh, I know, I know. Please don't send me hate mail. It's such a, it's such, it's a classic, and people love it, and people love Heathcliff, and I did not like any of the characters in that book. I didn't like the book at all. Much bigger fan of Jane Eyre than I was of Wuthering Heights. So sorry. I guess I just like the wrong Bronte sister. I don't know, but doesn't matter. That's not the point. My point is that even though Christian is described as a modern day Heathcliff, I liked him very, very much. <laughs> and yes, he's he's kind of brooding, but um, I didn't have the same issues that I had. Uh, I didn't have the same issues with Christian that I had with Heathcliff. So if you are in that tiny minority like I am of people that aren't terribly fond of Wuthering Heights uh, and don't lust after Heathcliff, do not fear you will like this book just fine and you don't have to worry about Christian being Heathcliff to the point where you don't like him. Did that make sense? It probably didn't. This is why I shouldn't speak words. Instead, let's talk about the book. It is a romance, as I'm sure you noticed. So it has all the good elements of a romance of two people thrown together. Initially, they're not quite so sure. You know, there's that attraction, but there's the, hmm, I don't know if I, if this person is the right one for me. Definitely there's chemistry, but we each have our own baggage. How are we going to deal with that? And there's, you know, there's always that tension in romance and I'm not giving anything away because it, uh, with the, they have to figure out their way to the happily ever after. That's what a romance does. You know, when you read it, that you're going to get the happily ever after, which is one of the things that I love about romance novels. 
And this one is a lot of fun in that it made me laugh a lot. And we'll talk about a little bit about that in the interview. Um, I appreciated Kelly and Christian as characters because they're so very multidimensional. They have their pasts that are, that they, you know, like we all do, that they bring into their current relationship. They're trying to overcome those pasts live in a way that that incorporates that past but enables them to move forward into the future so they really are struggling to find their way and um, figure things out they've got great friends in the characters from the first two books Nick and Sophie from the first book and Brant and Alyssa from the second book make appearances in this one as well so if you're uh, the type of person that likes that never quite likes to leave characters behind, then you get to have them still in this third book. So why don't we go ahead and turn to the interview with Claire Marty, and she can tell you more about this third book in the Finding Forever in Laguna series. It's called Sunset in Laguna. Hi, Claire. Welcome back to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. It's Saturday morning, so yeah. yes. it's the weekend. Yes, it is. <laughs> Gotta like that. It's lovely, actually. It's it's starting to cool down here, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, me too. It's not. Um, we don't have air conditioning here in uh, our house, so July was not pretty. Mm, no, I bet not. With the heat. Mm-hmm. So, um, as I said, welcome back. This is your second time on the podcast. Uh, for people who maybe didn't hear the first. Um, the first interview, would you introduce yourself and just let the listeners know a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, my name is Claire Marty, and I write romance novels. And um, I love writing. I've been doing it, you know, since I was a kid in some form or the other, you know, writing stories and nonfiction articles. But the Finding Forever in Laguna series, um, these are my first novels. And um, The Second Chance in Laguna was the first novel I wrote, and I was lucky enough to get a book deal and have my first book published, which is, um, which is great. And the series has been a lot of fun to write. And I'm also a yoga teacher, so I divide my time between writing and teaching yoga and meditation. Okay, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the Finding Forever in Laguna. Uh, it's a trilogy um, as a whole. Can you just give a, a bit of an overview of it? I, the, the three books could be read as standalones, don't you think? Yes. Yes, definitely. They can. Um, well, the reason I chose Laguna is, um, you know, I'm very influenced by my surroundings. I'm really sensitive to where I am at any given time. And the first time I went to Laguna, I was just, you know, overwhelmed. It's really beautiful and romantic and quiet. And it just seems kind of like a little bubble there in Southern California. It's a little different than, than all the towns around it. Um, and my husband and I got engaged in Laguna actually. So for me, it's, you know, definitely a sentimental spot and seemed like the perfect place for people to fall in love or, find an escape from maybe troubles or difficulties they're having. Um, And I wanted to create a series and have a group of friends, relatives, which is basically what it, you know, worked out to be um, and have them all find their happily ever after in Laguna and just in different ways. Um, They're all pulled to Laguna you know, but for different reasons, um, you know, Nick and Alyssa are from there. Christian is from there. Um, so it's home for them, but Sophie moves to Laguna. These are different characters in each book. Um, and they're all pulled there. They all find they're happily ever after. That's not a spoiler. They are romance (laughs) novels. So we know they are happy in the end, but, um, you know, I love having the interaction of, you know, the friends and the relatives and, and this group of people who all have very different stories and different backgrounds, but having that commonality of being in this special place and um, finding true love there. Okay. So talk specifically then about the third in the trilogy, um, Sunset in Laguna. 
So Sunset and Laguna is the story of Christian Wolf and Kelly Prescott. And you meet them again. As I said, this can be read as a standalone. You meet them in the first book. You see them in the second book. Um, Christian owns the wine bar in Laguna called Vines. And several scenes take place there throughout the book. I love wine. And (laughs) so I had to incorporate that in there somewhere. Um, Christian is actually a veteran suffering from PTSD. So he served four tours over in Iraq and Afghanistan and ended up resigning his commission early just because some of the things and the atrocities that he witnessed over there. So he's starting over, um, you know, back at his original hometown um, with something totally different. He wants to leave, you know, leave war and government and all of those things behind him and just lead a simpler life. But his PTSD and the issues he suffers around that, you know, are a big issue with him connecting with other people and actually moving forward. Um, Kelly Prescott is Sophie's best friend, so you meet her right away. She's an attorney um, who's from San Diego, and she's working in her father's law firm, and it's corporate litigation. She discovers that some of the clients... um, in particular, one large pharmaceutical company uh, is falsifying evidence and reports in order to get a drug through, and she just can't she can't function in that environment. She can't go against her ethics, so she ends up leaving everything and her family, and there's quite a bit of drama there, and her separating herself from her father and his firm. Um, to start over in Laguna Beach, and she ends up going to work as general counsel for a nonprofit veterans organization. So um, she and Christian are thrown together in interesting ways from that, in addition to them having the same circle of friends. And if you'll pardon me, I am going to jump in here so that we can take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, though, we'll be talking a little bit more about Christian and Kelly as the main characters of this novel and what Kelly, uh, excuse me, what Claire thinks makes them a good couple, what makes them resonate with readers. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between 4 and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Claire Marty about the final book in her Finding Forever in Laguna trilogy. Let's go ahead and get right back to that interview. And did you have a specific inspiration for, uh, did you have a particular inspiration for this part of the trilogy or did it just flow from the other two stories? Well, um, I knew that um, I wanted to... um, tackle the issues of PTSD and um, because it's unfortunately become such a common problem in our country, all these young men and women coming back and having a really hard time assimilating back into their lives. So Mm -hmm. there's a theme of being able to start over, which I like to thread through all of my books, but that, you know, no matter what's happened in the past, you can start again. And sometimes it's just, a little more difficult and you might need a little more help than, um, you know, you want to, to admit, I guess. So, um, with Christian's story, I wanted to really follow the theme of, of connection and how being brave enough to seek help can, you know, help you battle your demons basically, um, as opposed to trying to be strong and tough and, you know, tough it out, right, Mm -hmm. Um, on your own. And with Kelly's story, 
you know, she's very entrenched with her family and responsibility and duty, but the struggle she has with the ethical issues around um, some of the legal cases, um, you know, showing that she's brave enough to leave behind this established um, life that she sort of fell into because of her father. Um, you know, I'm an ex-attorney, so some of the issues Kelly struggled with were similar issues to what I dealt with myself. And um, so I knew I could address that topic in a, you know, a deeper manner because I felt that way myself, although I didn't have the big bad pharma company type of situation. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about um, Kelly and Christian as the main characters, whether separately or as a, as a couple, what do you think will resonate with readers about those two? Um, I think that both of them are very sympathetic characters in the sense of, okay, I'll confess, I kind of fell in love with Christian myself as I was writing him. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of my favorite here because he's that, you know, I kind of use the analogy of, you know, Heathcliff coming into the 21st century. So he's the more reserved, aloof, um, kind of keeps to himself a little bit more and their relationship's a little more of a slow burn. You know, he does not want, you know, he's very attracted to Kelly, but he doesn't want to be another one of her projects because, you know, she runs a nonprofit. She's all about rescuing and saving people, and he doesn't want to be seen as a project. And I think people can identify with that. Um, you know, and Kelly is the kind of woman that I think that everyone can admire because she stands up for her principles and what she believes in and, you know, makes a change, even though that, you know, means she might lose her family altogether, um, you know, her, her parents and starting over. So I think her courage and following her convictions when, you know, it just might not work out at all is very appealing. I think you're rooting for both of these characters to, um, you know, overcome these obstacles that they've been faced with, um, both internally and externally. And also, you know, they're, they're just cute together because they're attracted to each other, but neither of them wants to admit it. Mm -hmm. Googly eyes keeps coming up in the book. Yes, <laughs> googly eyes. Well, yeah, from in Second Chance and Lagoon, the first book, like they, you know, see each other at the bar and they're both like, ooh, you know, but then, you know, Christian from the first book assumes that, you know, he finds out Kelly works for her dad's law firm and that she's, you know, a wealthy attorney working for this corporate firm. And that to him is not appealing because he makes these assumptions about her. And, um, you know, Kelly just thinks he's really hot because he is. <laughs> but um, at that point, you know, which is second chance in Laguna is, you know, over a year earlier, she is in a relationship at that point anyway. So she's more just sort of admiring him from afar, but, you know, not taking it further than that. Right. At first. Mm -hmm. So um, Kelly moves to Laguna to work, as you said, for a nonprofit, and it's called Peaceful Warrior. Did you base that on an actual organization? Peaceful Warrior, I actually... Um, I studied a lot of different veterans organizations because there's so many wonderful ones out there. And, you know, for me personally, um, you know, I've been exploring and looking into, there's a lot of organizations where you can teach yoga for wounded warriors and help them through yoga and meditation. Um, you know, so I'd found some like that and I found, you know, there's all kinds of organizations designed to help peaceful warriors kind of, um, you know, I kind of created my own. I combined elements, um, from a lot of different ones that I found through my research to make it kind of more of a general organization and one that would be able to get a grant to hire a general counsel to handle, you know, the different legal and contractual matters that um, they need to handle to move on and be successful. So I made it up. Okay. <laughs> well, you made it up, but based on other things. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also yes. another organization that Kelly and Christian get involved with called uh, Pups for Vets. Um, and did you, what is, is that based on something or an actual organization? It is actually. So I'm a huge animal lover. I've 
been involved in, you know, rescue work for over 20 years and actually ran an animal rescue in LA back in the, about 14 years ago. But um, I'm a big believer in animals being able to help and heal and make all the difference in the world, right? So um, when actually I found an organization in Denver, I lived there briefly, and we adopted our dog from an organization called Freedom Service Dogs. And what they did was a little bit different than a lot of the service dog organizations I found was they actually go out to, um, you know, the animal shelters and also go to rescue groups and do temperament tests on the dogs. And if a dog has a, has the proper temperament to be trained as a therapy or service dog, they would rescue the dog. So essentially, you know, it's like a double rescue as opposed to breeding puppies to train to be service dogs. They're taking that extra step to save the dog, right, from the shelter and then give the dog this new job and this new life. And um, I found them when we were looking for a dog, because if, if a dog doesn't make it through the training program for whatever reason, um, you know, some dogs are just too food motivated. <laughs> you, right. you don't want to have a service dog that's going to go running after a hot dog that they smell down the street. Right. right. Um, or, you know, we heard some kind of funny stories of why they, you know, their epic fails, even though they have the temperament, it's usually about food. Yeah. But um, we actually, they did have some dogs for adoption who, for whatever reason, didn't make it through the program. And that's where we met our dog, um, Josie. And she um, was, you know, left tied up in a backyard and people moved away, just left her to starve mm. to death. Um, certain place for those people. <laughs> and uh, they, um, but Freedom Service Dogs, you know, heard about her from the rescue because they said she was very gentle and sweet. And so they temperament tested her. She was great. And it ended up she had some hip dysplasia. She's a real bit. She's she's huge. She is not like all of the pug in the book. <laughs> um, and she's like mastiff lab, giant, gentle beast. And they didn't want, you know, they put like a year of training into these animals. It's very expensive. They get donations from, pla you know, places to train these dogs. And, you know, if all of a sudden they trained her for a year, given her to somebody who needed her, say someone in a wheelchair or somebody who needed her to do those kinds of tasks, um, and all of a sudden she started having hip issues, you know, it would be a problem. So mm -hmm. they, they decided to adopt her out. So there, you know, that was our lucky, lucky uh, um, situation that we found her because she's perfect for us. And she, her hips, we've had her for four years now. Her hips are still doing well. They just told us, you know, she can't run 10 miles and, you know, cr no crazy hikes up mountains. And I was like, not a problem. <laughs> not a problem at all. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be running 10 miles unless someone was chasing me with an axe. So I think that's okay. So, so um, that's a long-winded version. So I was very, very impressed with that organization. And I wanted to, I know there's other org organizations. I found several other ones when I was looking for the name for Pups for Vets, you know, to come up with my own name. There's several organizations like that around the country. And I just, to me, if we're going to rescue these dogs and then these dogs get a new lease on life just as the returning veterans who need, you know, who need that service animal are getting a new lease on life. It just makes me really happy, and I wanted to highlight that and share that. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a character that you referenced but we haven't really talked about, and that is Olive, um, the... <laughs> Mm -hmm. People keep calling her. A, people keep calling her a rat, but she's not a rat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so Kelly decides to partner with this organization, Pups for Vets. It's kind of local, and see if they can work together. Because she, when she comes into Peaceful Warrior, she wants to organize new partnerships and you know really get things going. So she she asked Christian to go with her to see the dogs and. Actually, Olive's one of my favorite characters because I, you know, pugs are really funny looking. They're mm -hmm. really, really cute. But, you know, they've got those big eyes, yeah. and those little faces. So, so Christian, you know, they're taking a tour and Olive just latches onto him. And he's looking, you know, he's like, what is this little bug-eyed thing? <laughs> and, you know, he has this assumption, like a lot of people do, I think, that service dogs have to, you know, have to be these big dogs. Mm-hmm. 
so he's like, well, this isn't a German shepherd or a lab or, you know, what have you. He's like, what could this dog do, you know, for a returning veteran? And, you know, um, in the research I was doing about different dogs, you know, pugs are really, really good with anxiety and stress. And they can sense when their, you know, owners are, are having maybe an impending panic attack or anxiety issues. And um, so they're really good for that. So, you know, I, I kind of wanted to, to share that perspective that, you no, know, these dogs are really great for that. And, and the thing is, is, you know, Christian didn't lose a limb. Christian doesn't have a big external scar that we see. His, you know, issues and wounds are internal. And, you know, so she's sort of the perfect match for that for him. And, you know, she ends up charming him despite himself. And, um, you know, I think Olive is, plays a huge role in Christian, you know, I'm not going to say that Christian is healed. I don't think you can magically heal from PTSD and one day say, oh, I'm all better and I'm back, you know, to new normal. But she is one of the key factors in him, you know, getting a handle on it and beginning to manage his his situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was one of my favorite characters as well. <laughs> And I do have to jump in here again for our second break of the podcast. I will say, though, that uh, that statement about Olive the Pug being one of my favorite characters, it would have been strange for, uh, for me many years ago. I didn't used to be a dog person, and now I have dogs, and I am an absolute besotted fool when it comes to dogs. So I, I totally get it. I, I wouldn't have gotten it many years ago, but now I do. And um, dogs, yay. That's my random thought for you to take into the commercial break. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with author Claire Marty about the third book in her Finding Forever in Laguna series, Sunset in Laguna. Um, you have also mentioned that you teach yoga. And when you were on, mm-hmm. um, when you were here last time, you talked about some of the work that you do with yoga and writing. So I know you do something yeah. called Yoga Break for Writer's Block. Do you want to talk about that? I do, yeah. Um, um, well, actually, two things. Okay, so Yoga Break for Writer's Block is just a free class that I created, and it's um, it's literally 13 minutes long. You don't need yoga pants. You can just get up from your desk. And I designed it for writers because what we tend to do is you hole up, and you're in front of the computer, and your posture slouching, and your eyes are glazing over, and you keep drinking coffee, and it's not very healthy for you physically or, you know, mentally and emotionally. So... I created a short little break where you could get up from the, you know, the chair, stretch out your spine, clear your head a little bit. So, you know, it's sort of instead of having coffee or a sugary snack to wake yourself up or stretch out, you know, to kind of give you a little rejuvenative boost. Um, And that's on a site called yogadownload.com where I teach a lot of online yoga that, um, you know, you can stream and, and that type of thing. I also have a link to it on my site, um, my ClaireMarty.com site. But um, in terms of yoga and, and meditation, I started doing something a little bit new as well. I recently um, taught yoga for a yoga retreat in Colorado in the Rockies. And I did a workshop on, um, you know, journaling for intention, you know, using meditation um, to do that. So meditating kind of on the things that you want to manifest in your life, the importance of writing it down and journaling. So sort of tying together 
um, those ideas of writing and meditation and kind of moving forward to where you want to go in your life with a clear, um, with a clear path. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be teaching um, any other workshops in, in coming up? Do you, do you think? Um, I am, you know, I think I'm going to do it. One of the yoga studios where I teach here in Encinitas, I'm going to um, probably around New Year's, you know, which is a really great time, right? Because everyone wants to set, you know, their New Year's resolutions. I like to think of them more as intentions, the sense of the direction you want to go. But using that same thing of learning to ask those questions and journal and write about it and, you know, meditate to clear your mind and help you focus. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing more of that. And you now I, I did incorporate meditation as another modality for Christian, um, you know, in the book on his path to, you know, working through his PTSD issues. And so meditation was another thing that I had offered at the nonprofit. And, you know, I think there's some kind of funny scenes there because if you <laughs> yep, try yep. to meditate and you don't meditate regularly, you know how difficult it can be and how how distracted our minds really are when you try to focus on one thing. So, um, yep. That was actually one of my favorite bit. scenes because I was just <laughs> laughing at <laughs> the way uh, Christian's brain just sounds like my brain when I try to meditate. It's just <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I used to run yoga teacher trainings and I would teach meditation and I literally would write up on the whiteboard welcome to your mind mm. <laughs> that's how we would start it because you know we all think like oh yes I've got all these very important thoughts going on right. <laughs> and then when you actually sit quietly and you realize like no I have about 10 thoughts five of them are the same yep. and they're just going around in circles so it does teach us how uh distracted we actually are you know um yeah, it's meditation. You got to laugh or you'll cry. So you find <laughs> that group. So you find that practice. Yes. Yeah. What's next for you in terms of writing? So um, I have, a, I've completed a fourth book and it's, um, it's longer than the Laguna series. Those are about 50,000 words. It's about 75,000 words. And it is the start of a new series. And um, right now, uh, I have it set in Rancho Santa Fe, California, which is close to me again. Rancho Santa Fe, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, it's a wealthy little enclave. It's kind of like Bel Air or the Hamptons, but everybody has horses and ranches. So they like developed this community back in the 20s, and everyone's got at least three or four horses. Some people have much larger ranches, and it's just it's this beautiful you kind of, it's five miles from my house, but you feel like you're in a different world. And so it's a very different lifestyle because you're, again, five miles from the Pacific Ocean, but you've got these people walking around in their cowboy hats and boots, but it's Southern California. So it's very interesting. Um, again, it's a very interesting community. And so this story, I've got um, a family, the heroine is a horse breeding manager and there's very few women horse breeding managers in the industry. So she's kind of a tomboy and kind of tough. And she's actually quite bratty. She's a bad-tempered little redhead. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> she was really fun to write. And um, then, you know, so she manages it. And they have this huge ranch um, out here, you know, that her father uh, started. And I've got a Hollywood stuntman who comes down um, because they want to film a movie on the ranch. and for various reasons, she hates Hollywood. There was a family tragedy there. So kind of they can't stand each other from the beginning, Holt and Sam. And, you know, so it's their story set on the backdrop of the horse breeding and the Hollywood movie industry. So it's kind of a fun combination of some different, um, different type of genres, if that makes sense. And so that's a planned series right now. Um, I've got a couple agents who are reading the full manuscript, so knock on wood. Um, I will uh, hopefully contract um, for that. I'm looking to go to a larger publisher this time just to have a wider distribution for these books, mm -hmm. so kind of take it up another level. And um, so I'm as I'm waiting for that, I am 
almost done with the research for mainstream, um, more of a mainstream fiction with a love triangle set in 1920s Paris and Antibes. So um, I'm very excited for that book. That's a bigger book. So I've been kind of working up to it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. And how about what have you been reading this summer? I have been reading a lot of historical romance, which I love to read. So um, Kerrigan Burns' latest book, Duke with a Dragon Tattoo, is fantastic. And Anna Bradley is one of my favorites. I've read a few, um, what's the full name? Elifer, uh, Elifer. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I don't know if you've read that book. Mm -hmm. It's more like a book club book. It's very very interesting. I couldn't put it down. I stayed up till one in the morning, two nights, <laughs> which is very regretful when the alarm went off at six thirty. Yeah. Um, and then I'm I'm reading Christina Lauren's new book right now. Um, Josh and Josh and Hazel aren't dating or something like that, and that's really funny. I love them. They're very, they're very, uh, they're two people who write as Christina Lauren, and they're laugh out loud funny. So enjoying the humor in that book. Good. Thank you. And you've mentioned your website, but um, tell us the website again and where people can find you on social media. Um, my uh, author website is is just my name. So it's clairemarty.com. And then I'm on Instagram as Claire P. Marty. And Twitter is the same, Claire P. Marty. And I have a Claire Marty author page on Facebook as well. So I'm all over the place. Nice. Thank you. Um, what else? Is there anything else that you want to talk about that we haven't covered? Um, read my books. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, no, I think we kind of, you know, went through and I'm really excited about Sunset and Laguna. Like the early response has been really strong for this. I think the the PTSD and the rescue animal and you know, the leaving the law are really resonating with people on on a deeper level. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. And it just came out a couple weeks ago, right? August 29th. Yes. Oh, yes. So just last week. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday. I really appreciate you coming back to talk about Sunset in Laguna. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Once again, I want to thank my guest, Claire Marty, for her second appearance on the podcast. I always have a lot of fun when she is here, and I like chatting with her. So thank you, Claire. What I didn't mention at the beginning of this episode, although I did mention it on Thursday's episode, is that this is... Um, I do have copies of this book for a giveaway, so you definitely want, if you're a fan of romance, you should definitely sign up for the giveaway. And to do that, all you have to do is go to our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Those links are in the show notes. So just go to social media and comment on episode 107, Interview with Claire Marty. That's it. A simple comment, and you'll be entered to win a copy of Sunset in Laguna. Come on. It's got... um. It's got steamy romance. It's got hilarious scenes. It's got adorable, ugly little pugs. What's not to love? You should definitely enter. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you will join me again on Thursday when we will have an interview talking about, again, books. I know. I say it at the end of every episode, and I know you're shocked at, every, at the end of every episode that I'm going to come back and talk about books. And on that note, it's probably time for me to sign off. Thank you again for joining me. Please join me again on Thursday. In the meantime, go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.